What do you think of the Kings opponent tonight, Phoenix? It's a 64 win team last year who, you know, the, the roster with the exception of Jay Crowder still intact, but you know, we say it all the time, it's bad vibes around Phoenix. And I don't, see them winning 64 games uh but we were debating is this a playing team do they just fall to 50 wins like what i just can't get a a feel for where phoenix is but i know i don't like them as much as i did last year yeah i mean have you ever fully been bought in though like because i've always had a tough time buying in fully with who who and what they are i wasn't last year i wasn't the first year when they made the finals i said nah this isn't real and i didn't think it was going to be real coming into last season when Chris Paul went down, um, and Devin Booker, and they went like, they went like eighteen and three, while Chris Paul was, down. I was like, damn, maybe they are really good. So, uh, yeah, something yeah. feels off though with them. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. Feel good here. yeah. I mean, they've got talent, that's for sure, and, and they've proven that they can win. Um, Father Time is undefeated though, and Chris Paul, you know, he's going to have to take less and less of a role each year. And uh, and then on top of that, the Aiden situation is kind of like, eh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it's not good. And uh, and I think that they worked out some of that. I hope that they worked out some of that issue uh, between him and Monty Williams. But even up until like two weeks ago, uh, that was a problem where he had still not spoken to his coach since the playoffs. And uh, yeah. And then again, the Jay Crowder thing is just weird. And you know, we saw rumors that I think they've offered Jay Crowder and probably and something for um, why do I always Jordan Clarkson to mm-hmm. Utah. Um, so that's that's one of those deals that you know that would make them a much more interesting team and give them better depth. But uh, overall, you know, they are a fun team. They've got a lot of young talent, a lot of up and coming guys that can really, you know, I, I kind of. I like when uh, when Bridges takes over. He shows that other side of himself. That's just like this really, really crazy, lengthy scorer. And uh, I don't think he gets that opportunity enough. You know, Cam Johnson's a guy that's really good. And you know, like I, I think that they're uh, they're a team that you still have to look out for. I just don't know that. Again, whether they're a one seed, whether they're a three seed, or whether they're a five seed, like kind of taking a, a step back a little bit. You don't really know. I, w- one thing I was looking forward to seeing t- tonight is they they've they're a good defensive team. They've always been a you know they've been a good defensive team under Monty Williams, and I thought that would create uh, a, a really good challenge for Sacramento, uh, even in a preseason setting. Because you know Chauncey Billups, regardless of what you think of the Portland roster, Portland hasn't been a good defensive team in in years. They've been almost as bad as the Sacramento Kings, but they've had Dame Lillard and CJ McCollum to help kind of cover that up. I think the fact that Phoenix should they be interested in tonight's game? They're a good defensive team, which creates a more uh, challenging setting for them should they want to attempt to hit 46% of their threes again like they did a couple of nights ago. Yeah. Um, again, like if, if Phoenix Phoenix is completely like fully engaged, that's a good thing for the Kings. The Kings need to be pushed at this point. What they don't need is to go 4-0 in preseason and run everyone over and, and have this false sense of like confidence walking into game one and they get drubbed by 30. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what you don't need. You need some, uh, you need a realistic opponent. And I don't think that they've got that. Um, I, I'll say this again. I, I I've said this before. I really don't think that Portland has any kind of identity. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's, it's a lot on the coaching aspect of it. And I, I worry about the same thing when it comes to, you know, it's one thing for Utah to have no identity because no one expects them to win any games. And, you know, their their young head coach will get plenty of time to figure out how to build something there. But when you're looking at the Lakers and Darvin Ham, you're looking at Portland uh, with Chauncey Billups. Man, you got to figure out how to be the head man, like, really quickly. And those situations aren't super easy. Both of them have huge superstar personalities that they've got to deal with. And, and we'll see. We'll see how it works out. I, that's one thing I'll point out with the Kings. I think they're in a really good place because they hired a veteran coach that's a winner mm-hmm. in every stop he's been at pretty much and, uh, and who just spent the last six years winning like three championship rings and somehow taking like a 33-year-old and up 
roster and and putting in like a they finished second in defensive rating and second in rebounding in the league without a rebounder that averaged more than 7.3 a game those are things that are just stunning and that it's all about the team it's all about everyone buying in and if he can get that same thing here uh, I think the Kings are going to have a pretty good solid season yeah James you mentioned uh, Portland a little bit and I'm with you man like I I kind of had a little more reverence for them before the preseason just because Dane was there I like Jeremy Grant I like I like some of the individual pieces but for what I've seen from them in about three or four preseason games I don't like it at all I don't I don't like the combination of players and I always look at that as a opportunity for the Kings obviously when you talk about playoffs but also an opportunity because if it's not looking right after a certain amount of time in Portland they could get into the 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 uh, Wimbenyama sweepstakes real easy, you know what I mean? And that's that's just another opportunity or feather in the cap for the Kings. Like if it's not looking right early enough, they may say, you know let's not even waste our time and get involved in that. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Like, will there be another team that just completely drops out and and basically whether the Kings are at the bottom or not hands the Kings uh, a play in spot. And that that's totally a possibility because, I mean, we've all seen it. You you watch like two seconds of clips of of Wamanyana and you're like, uh, okay, I want that guy on my team. I mean, that's that guy right there is gonna win you know three championships. So that's that's how you have to look at him and how he can change your your franchise for the good like very quickly. I was trying to find the Portland Trailblazers. Their first round pick goes to Chicago, but it's one through fourteen protected um another yeah. reason to kind of yeah. tank right? yeah if it's not looking right may need to hold on to that pick by by all means by at all costs yeah and i mean you know what um uh, i i think when i was watching them the other night i just felt like they uh they they overcooked the onions they didn't put the the onions in a little raw and let them they listen s- to kevin they didn't listen to <laughs> kevin and and to me if you're not going to listen to kevin that means that it's very possible that you don't have a coach that is going to be able to put those guys together. And I know it's Mm -hmm. a long season and we're, we're Mm -hmm. not to that point where you start really making judgments on teams, but they just didn't feel like they had, they were just throwing things out there. Well, and one thing we probably have not discussed enough, at least when it comes to the Portland trailblazers is we're just going to pretend like losing CJ is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like not just his on court production, but you know chemistry, you know leadership wise, come right. Like that feels well, like it's a big, it, bigger deal than we're acknowledging. It does. They're probably banking that uh, that Anthony's ready. That's probably sure, on the well, court. Or yeah. here's I, I, what I'm going to point out yeah, there, though. I'm going to point this out. There's a big difference between C.J. McCollum's personality and Anthony Simmons uh, Simon's personality. And so, if you want to be a guy who plays next to to Dame. Like you can't just disappear and act like he's the guy and and you're you know you're Robin and he's Batman and you might get something you know going sometime along the way because that's what it kind of looked like, like he's just out in the corner standing there. You're like, aren't you the guy that was just lights out last season? That was just really really like like tremendous. But again, it takes a it takes a the right personality to put next to a guy like Damian Lillard. It's one thing again if he's a third guard. But if he's a second guard, everyone knows that like CJ McCollum walks in and he he owns a room in the same way that Tyrese Halliburton does. And mm-hmm. playing along that that allows him to just play alongside Damian Lillard with seamlessly yeah. because he's already got a big enough, strong enough personality. Well, Simon is going to have to show that he's got that personality that can step into some really, really big shoes. Yeah, it's a completely different role now for Simons, and there's no guarantee. He's he's ready for all that. Um, going back to the 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 Kings real quick and, and talking about people in a different role. Myself and Damien, we just kind of laid out a scenario where the question was like, who was a wild card team in the NBA? And and I I there are other wild card teams in the NBA, but I, I said the Sacramento Kings. And one of the guys that we talked about was Harrison Barnes. We've talked about him a lot, but him being in a position that he's never been in in Sacramento where he's a guy that 
You don't you don't have to have 16 from him every night for this team to be successful. Do you think that's something do you number one, do you think that's accurate? Uh the type of role he's in right now? And also, do you think that's something that he may flourish in? Yeah, I want to see what it looks like 20 games in. I do, because like I still think that Harrison Barnes is one of your more stable players on this roster. And for a team that's looking for stability and looking to pin in stats as opposed to writing stuff in pencil and having to adjust and erase, um, he's still a guy that you can write in pin that, you know, at, at a minimum, I think 15 points a game. Um, but like, you don't have to have him go crazy every night. And I think the way that the ball is moving, the way that his versatility as a scorer, his ability to go to the rack, his ability to shoot the corner three, to really mix it up for these guys is going to come in handy a lot. You know, he's a smart player. He's already like formed chemistry with Sabonis as like a, as a cutter. Um, I, I think he's a guy that, again, he could get to 16, every single night and it won't look nearly as hard as it did last year. Hmm. And, and I think that that's where you kind of have to look at him as a player that um, like if all the players around him are better, he'll just look better himself. Like it, it will allow him to, to look more comfortable. Uh, his defensive metrics will skyrocket. I don't, I don't think he'll be, I don't think he'll be a bottom 50 uh, like statistical guy uh, as far as on the defensive end where last year he's like bottom 12. Um, like, I, I think he'll be, he'll go back to where he usually is and, you know, top 30% of, of all NBA players, top, you know, probably 70% of forwards, mm -hmm. like defensively. And, and it's not like he's a lockdown defender, but he is really solid in everything that he does. And having guys like that, that are multifaceted, that can do all kinds of things on the court, I think it'll, it'll play well. It feels like as a collective, this group has a lot less pressure on it uh, than they used to. Yeah, I mean, we talk about this with De'Aaron. Um, obviously, we haven't really talked about it with Sabonis because he hasn't been here long enough. But the same for Harrison Barnes. And to a certain degree, Keegan Murray also in that as a rookie, he's not coming in with the weight of the franchise on his shoulders like De'Aaron Fox did, like DeMarcus Cousins did, like so many rookies of the past. Did. It's like you're a nice piece that we believe is going to help us get to our end goal. And I think that's the case for Harrison Barnes, too. He's a, he's a piece that's going to help this team get to its end goal. I think Sabonis, bigger piece. De'Aaron Fox, bigger piece. Those guys probably have a little bit more pressure. But I think the burden is eased because, as has been pointed out many times, uh, since free agency, this is the best roster the Kings have had in a decade. Yeah, you know, and when you mentioned Fox – um, every time we see a list of the best players, 25 and under De'Aaron Fox isn't mentioned anymore. Um, he dropped from what, like number 35 to number 50 something mm -hmm. in, in the preseason poll on ESPN. Um, we talked to him the other night in the locker room and Sean asked him about it, whether he's going to wear Converse this year, as opposed to Nike's, which he's always wore. Mm -hmm. And he said that he's a, um, he's a shoe free agent still and he's, okay. he's yeah he's figuring those things out right so i think we're at this like this point in his career where he needs to show like right now who he is like this is that moment where like all the the stars are aligned for him to have a really good season and to break out and again to get himself back in the shoe game to get himself back in to the conversation of best players, you know, 25 and under or 26 and under, uh, best guards in the Western Conference. He has the opportunity to get himself into the conversation, not to be a the best guard, but, you know, one of and kind of get back to where he was maybe two years ago when he averaged 25 a game. Um, this is kind of that moment. And I, I think that he's ready for it. Like the the vibe with him is just so much different. He's uh, He's matured. Um, you know, he's grown up in life and, and as a basketball player, he knows what he needs to do. He came out and hit all three of his three point attempts the other night and just looked mm -hmm. like confident and ready. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is one of those seasons where we keep thinking, okay, he can be this or that. And, you know, if he's a galvanizing figure that can lead a team to the playoffs, all of the, the fanfare will follow because everyone's kind of been waiting for him to do that. Yeah. I think. I think he's ready. 
I think he's ready for whatever that entails, right? Whether that means, um, you know, it's more of a scoring load and he's going to have to score the ball a little bit more. Or I think he's ready to take a step back from scoring if that means the team is better. I think he's fine with it. Th- I think his his singular focus this year is about finding a way to to help this team or lead this team being a winning team. That's his main focus. Because you've been with him a lot, James. Very smart young man. And he understands. Like, it doesn't – if I score 28 and we're not winning, like, I'm going to get killed for that. Like, it doesn't – it doesn't matter if he, he probably understands if I score 18, but we're the sixth seed, I'm going to get lauded for that. They're going to love me for that. He gets it. So I think his main focus is whatever needs to be done to get this team to be a winning team. And I, I think he's committed to that for sure. You know, he's always had this attitude that um, like if, if he gets the team to the playoffs, that he'll get all of these things, right. That he, he'll become an all-star like he's a guy who doesn't like to like to talk about personal goals. He always says that, like, if our team gets to point B, like I will get whatever it is that is sort of what comes with that, with being the best player on a team that gets to the playoffs or gets to the first round or the second round, whatever it is. So he's always had that mentality. I kind of feel like I want him to want those things this year mm. because – if he does get there, if he does do those things, he's right. Like, I, I what I mean is, if he does become an all star, it's because he's taken the team and made them a playoff team. Mm-hmm. He's pushed them that direction, and so as opposed to it being the other way around, where, you know, if I get there, then I'll get all this acclaim. Like, go get the acclaim. Go get the acclaim the whole first half of the season, where no one will question whether you're an all star in February, and if you do that. I guarantee you two things. Number one, you, you're going to, like, the team's going to win. And number two, you're going to make the playoffs. Like, that's what's going to happen if you're that guy. And so, you know, it's you always have to look at these things from a couple, a couple of different angles. And I, I think he's ready. That's, that's the biggest thing. I think after the years of kind of, like, getting beat down a little bit by the, the force that is the Sacramento Kings, um, I, I think he's ready to to take that step, and he feels like he finally has the support around him that he can like become that player that he wants to be and that people expected him to be when he came out of college.